Okay, so we just finished having dinner, and we're gonna have, it's two o'clock, so there's a cuckoo clock thing. So we're gonna watch this real quick. Something happened? Maybe. I'm losing my mind here. Apparently, some stuff's supposed to happen here. So bright, I can't see anything. Let's take a minute to get powered up, I guess. Hello! So it just beeps at us? Pardon me? So is this like, our birds and stuff supposed to come out? That's, like a big cuckoo that's, clock? No, that's it, that's it. That's oh, okay. Just breathtaking, huh? <laughs> yes, yes. I was just curious. Cool. No, cool. Well, it's, no it's not, worries. It's not, a, it's not a big thing. It's really not a big thing. Okay, okay. So, hello to you. Hi. So, what we are going to do is a walking tour in Rothenburg, actually a stroll, slowly. And I try to find out the shady places, if this is okay with you. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. you can read my name on that little license plate, huh? Wolfgang. Um, first, I'd like to give you information uh, about Rothenburg so that you know where you are. Uh, you know you are in Bavaria. You know this Bavaria, the most southern county in Germany. And within Bavaria, you are in Franken, Franconia, which is the northern area of uh, Bavaria. Rothenburg is a small, <coughs> small city. Uh, we only have 11,000 inhabitants. And roughly one third of them lives inside here, so approximately 3,000. And while we're walking around a little bit, I'm sure I'm the only native you see around here. Yeah? So all the others are visitors, guests, tourists, high as you are. So in other words, this is a tourism place. Uh, 3,000 inhabitants, residents, uh, residentals. But during the year, we have two up to three millions of people to come to visit this little, well, actually, village. And we are right here in the center, the middle of town, of course, the marketplace, the main square, so also we see this place here. And at the marketplace, we of course have the most important building, which is the town hall, the big one right over there. And this is really a big, big, big town hall. Uh, when you consider that the population in the Middle Ages was around 4,000. And for 4,000 people, this really was a big town hall. And that's an indication for the importance of the city, for the self consciousness of the citizens, but of course also the indication for the wealth, for the money, for the of money, for the wealth. Uh, I'd like to take you around this town hall, but first I would like to say a few words about that building over there, which was an important building, in former times a very important building. It is called the City's Councilor's Tavern. Uh, we'll be back later. Hmm. So the Assassin's Creed climby walls. Well, in here, between these two parts of the old town hall, I like to point out that uh, Renaissance gate here at the right side. 
Uh, because it's real to be mentioned, uh, because this is another very uh, well known famous site for your ocean work, so you find this one very often on uh, oil paintings, etchings, and so on. And it's called the Emperor's Gate, uh, because this is the entrance to a big, big hall, a lobby which is behind, which is called the Emperor's Hall. And this was the place for the mayor uh, to welcome the king, the emperor, when they visited the city, the Emperor's Gate. But much more important than this gate were the smaller doors here, all along the wall. And all of that here was its sign, there was another row of these gates and arches. And in uh, the old days, the shops and stores uh, used to be inside here. So this place can be mentioned as a uh, bazaar. bazaar. And in these days, when you wanted to have an exclusive shop here, this was the place you came in. This was the place where you got all these, well, nowadays we would call them the luxury goods, the luxury products. Huh? So there's uh, exclusive clothes, expensive form, and so uh, fragrances, jewelry, whatever. So these ancient stores, probably they were the first boutiques uh, in any town. Huh? And the place, let's say, this was the shopping center. Uh, the mall, shopping mall, the media mall. Uh, okay. Huh? Yeah, this mechanism Of food, there was a special marketplace. That's the reason. Uh, in other words, once we had have a horse market, uh, the fish market, the milk market, no? this here used to be the green marketplace. So, vegetables, fruits, and so on have been sold here. And when you take a few uh, to these three houses, uh, a few up to the roof uh, um, here at the gable end, you see these wooden beams coming out. Huh? And you see them in each old house in the town. There's a pulley, so a pulley system. Ah, very important, uh, necessary. Uh, because every owner of the house in these days was requested to store a certain quantity of food in his house all year round. So that in times of war, when there was a siege, but it was not necessary that someone, a single person, a single man, had to open the city to go out just to bring food inside for himself only. And that means not to bring the rest of the city into danger. So this was the reason why everybody even was forced to have such an emergency food in his house all year round. And there we have to say something, uh, very less, uh, very few of these old houses here, they had a cellar, a basement, like we used to have nowadays. And so they had to use the attic to store these uh, products. And of course it was much easier for them to get it up from the outside using these pulleys, uh, instead of using the deep, uh, the deep uh, uh, dark, uh, uh, narrow staircases inside. Yeah? system storage is up there. Okay, then we go over to the church, please.
with a Chinese symbol popped into it. Huh. Well, yeah, I'd like to show you the biggest building in town, which is, of course, the church. Uh, you know, in all these old German or European cities, uh, villages, the churches always used to be the biggest buildings. No other house uh, should be bigger than a church, no other tower should be higher than a church tower. Uh, this is the St. Jacob's Church in Rothenburg, and St. Jacob's Church is uh, one of these very typical Gothic churches. And you know such a typical Gothic stylistic mean are the windows. The, the windows are very tall, slim, high, and mainly that the windows are pointed on top, you know, compared to the much older Romanesque windows, which uh, used to be rounded, arch on top, the Gothic ones are the pointed ones. And also the church was built very slim, very tall, very high. And this should reflect uh, the, the religious mind of the Gothic, the spirit of the Gothic times. And that means that the eye of the viewer, when looking at the church, the eye of the viewer uh, automatically should rise up to God. So they wanted to express, to be closer to God by building the churches here in that way. And they started to build this church in 1311. That the architects, the workers, uh, they needed about 200 years to build this church. Huh? And 200 years, that's a long period of time. And that means three, four or five generations have worked on that church. And that means the ones who started to build this church, they were absolutely sure never seeing the end. Huh? And that's an indication for the strong, strong faith in the times of God. Completed by the end of the 15th century, and uh, so in the, in the beginning this was um, a Catholic church, of course. Rothenburg joined the Reformation in 1544, and so on the Reformation up to nowadays, it is the Protestant church, the main church in town. So this is where all the Sunday services are, of course, uh, the, the, the weddings, Christmas, huh? um, St. Jacob's. But it's also a little museum. Uh, I don't know if you have heard about a man called Tilman Riemenschneider. Tilman Riemenschneider. Yeah, exactly. Uh. Bingo. <laughs> uh, I knew was something. <laughs> yeah, Tilman Riemenschneider. He lived around the year 1500. Uh, you know, that's the time of uh, Michelangelo, uh, that's the time of Leonardo da Vinci, and it's also the time of Tilman Riemenschneider, and he's considered to be our major, major altar builder, altar carver, sculptor. Uh, he was, and he made some very, very fine pieces of altars, uh, which are all carved out of wood. There's no color on these altars. Huh? It's just a pure wood that really uh, speaks to us. Huh? And we are very proud and glad to have one of his masterpieces here in town, right inside in St. Jacob. You will find that very beautiful so-called Holy Blood Altar. Also, whenever you find the time, perhaps after our little sport, you really should have a look inside to see these very beautiful and famous carvings, the Holy Blood Altar. Uh, another building I'd like to show you is right over there, which is another Renaissance building. Uh, interesting here is, of course, the tower, especially the diagonal windows, which are going with the stairs leading up inside here, following the staircase. Huh? Uh, you see there oh. are another three sundials, three sundials so that you can see the time from each side of the tower. Huh? Of course, you need sun for it. Huh? And you have to consider about this time of the year we have daylight saving time, yeah? so you have to consider one little hour difference. Huh? And this building here used to have another important purpose. This one here was the first high school we had in town. Or perhaps you've heard about the German word which is gymnasium. gymnasium huh? uh, I know when you're talking about a gym you mean something completely different than we do. And this building here uh, was in operation as a schoolhouse for more than 500 years. Until 1978, this was a schoolhouse, was replaced then by a, a bigger one, a modern one outside. And nowadays, this one here is in use for that what we call a youth center. Have you heard about the youth centers in Germany so far? Yes, no? Um, a youth center in Germany is a place, a room, a house, whatever, uh, for the teenagers, for the youngsters. Huh? A place <laughs> where they, where they <laughs> should, should spend a sensible leisure time. That means not playing the video games all the time. No Pokemon hunting. <laughs> yeah? Um, yeah? Uh, a place, uh, but also a place where they, where, they, where they may have their meetings, where they may have their parties, their, their, their disco nights, whatever, uh, where they may have fun. 
a little fun, hmm? <laughs> not too much fun. Controlled fun, supervised fun. Huh? That's the idea of the youth standards, and that's the one here in the Okay? Well, there we go on this way, please. <laughs>